You know, the result of the by-election that took place in the Iowa West Wogong constituency and the Electoral Commission, according to release result, is indicating that Lydia Al-Hassan of the MPP won the seat. She garnered some 68.8% of the total votes, which um, by popular votes, number 12,030 votes. It's followed by the NDC's Delali K. Brimpong, who garnered 30.37% of total votes cast, which uh, is in the number of uh, 5,299. It's followed by the PPP's William Dowapo, who had 0.58%, uh, I should say, 102 votes. And uh, we had Clement Boedi of the LPG having 17 votes, representing... 0.1% of the votes. And if you get to myjoinline.com, you get the breakdowns where, and um, you get to have the votes that were valid, the total votes that were also cast, and then uh, you have a total turnout of some 1,000 uh, out of uh, 1,000 a total percentage turnout, as you find it, and the total turnout of the voters as they are. So you get to find them also on myjoinline.com. The total valid vote that were cast were 17,501. All right. Now, it was an election marred by violence. Joy News' checks indicate the number of people injured in the outbreak of violence at Baoleshi in the Ayawaso West Wogon constituency on Thursday morning could be more than the six confirmed by the police. The injured, mainly NDC supporters, reported to the Legon Hospital with various degrees of injury. Our colleague Maxwell Agbagba was at the Legon Hospital and the University of Ghana campus and this is what he pieced together. Scores of NDC supporters are gathered here at the Legon um, Hospital. We've been speaking to the administrator um, of the health facility, Eric Gazi, um, who says that um, officially they've received um, seven people, um, six of them are actually in a stable condition right now um, at the health facility. One of them has been transferred to the 37 military um, hospital because of his condition. But just when we stepped out, we saw um, more people arriving um, here to receive um, treatment. We went to MP's house. Then they brought food. So we are taking the food from the car, a vehicle to the house. We are there. The, I mean, the visiting forces came there. They say, what, what are we doing here? How, how did you know that they were yeah, the, uh, yeah. How did you know that they were Oh, they wear the uniform with the dress, black, and then they say teeth, eyes, something, something. So they come with a gun. They say, what, what are we people doing there? They say, oh, why? We did with auntie's, auntie's house. They say, they for search all of us. They for search all of us. So they started searching. When the search finished, no, they say, oh, we for move from there. I say, ah, where are we for move, go where? Here be the auntie's house. We for move, go where? No, they started beating eyes. Using the gun, I mean, boot, boot, I mean, I mean, pushing us all over, giving one shoot, shooting people. They shoot one of our guys in leg, one of in, I mean, in hand, and then one of that is a certain man to that what to be like. They shock in here. It's not small. The parliamentary candidate for the NDC Ayaso West Wagon, um, the Lali Kwesibrampon, is actually in this vehicle um, behind me. He just came here um, to the Legon Hospital to visit um, some of the NDC supporters who are injured, who've been brought here. Really, I was at home mm. when the incident happened. But what I've been told is that some armored cars, mm. about eight of them were trying to enter, I mean, and it's around my house. Mm. And... Uh, some uh, boys uh, were at the gate. Mm. Whatever happened or did not happen, they started shooting at them. Mm. I didn't really believe the incident, mm. so I decided to come to Legon Hospital, mm. and I have seen 15 wounded men mm. in University of Ghana Hospital. Mm. My only comment is that this is barbaric. Mm. 
It doesn't fit 21st century, let alone when Ghana is supposed to have a president who is a lawyer. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Here on the University of Ghana campus, the presiding officers we've been speaking to um, are saying that there are low turnouts um, here on the campus, especially because um, majority of the University of Ghana students are yet to arrive on campus. But we spoke to the um, chairman of the new patriotic party, Mr. Freddie Blay, who just left here um, minutes ago. We've been asking him about the incident that happened at Baweleshi. He's alleging that the NDC bust uh, men from Tamale to come and cause mayhem here in this constituency. We hear that a lot of people were bust from Tamale, gathered some with weapons, unlicensed weapons. I can't even imagine what will happen. Why and what prompted that kind of thing? You know, it's meant maybe to cause mayhem. Not that there will be impression created that there was chaos in this one single by-election. We're at the Legon Hospital and the allegation you know, flying around is that the people who attacked the NDC supporters were actually um, NP people. Some have described them as the invincible forces. The security people are investigating it. I think they will come out with whatever. I don't want to. I'm, I'm MPP chairman. I don't want to create an impression contrary to what you will see. But are they, are they from your were they in on uh, on a, or near a police station? Were they gathered somewhere else with weapons? What were they doing? Did they, you, you, mean the NDC, you mean the NDC people were attacked? No, yes. I, I, I can't be sure that anybody was attacked. Okay. But there were, I'm, I'm told that there was some fight. Away from the by-election, Minority Chief Whip in Parliament, Muntaka Mubarak, has apologised over Wednesday's exchanges he had with the ASEAN Central Member of Parliament, Kennedy Japong. The two traded insults after Kennedy Japong confronted him over a petition he had sent to the Privileges Committee, al Haji Mubarak, for petitioning the Privileges Committee to investigate him. The Asawasi MP says he's sorry for the incident. It shouldn't have happened. I mean, we are members of Parliament and we are representing people and we are, each and every one of us is a leader in its own right because if you are leading people, I mean, and I feel very bad about what happened because two wrongs cannot make a right. No matter the provocation, one should be restrained. And a lot of people have called and I've expressed saying that I'm really very sorry about what happened yesterday. I really wish it never happened. But as human, the self-preservation is natural. And sometimes, especially when you do not expect it. Uh, and as you know, in Parliament itself, sometimes argument can become very heated. Uh, we are thankful that it, it didn't get to uh, it's, uh, I mean, why do you call it uh, fist exchange, but it stayed at West exchange. I pray that this never happens again. This is what I would say with regards to uh, yesterday in the morning. Now, it would be recalled that there is a pending case against Kennedy at Japong in which the Privileges Committee has recommended sanctions against him for describing the House as cheap. But the House has failed to adopt the report five months after it was concluded. First Deputy Minority Whip Matthew Nyindam says the House will take action on the issue soon. What I, what I think is that sometimes it depends on the committee. The committee, they have met, they have to look at the issue, they've come out with their report. I remember before we, we went for the Christmas vacation, the report was advertised and there was the indication that we were going to, we were going to look at it, debate it, and then the recommendations are, are given by the House or the Speaker. But I'm sure in the process, whether they wanted to add something or something has to be taken off, the report has not been taken. But the good news is that it's going to be taken. You see, that's the good news. And it's not Ken's report alone. I mentioned other report about the Kentampo uh, waterfalls and some other motions that we are going to address. But I think that our democracy is such that there is nothing that can, can be hidden anywhere. 
and parliament is such that when referrals are given, obviously uh, the reports will be taken. But I also think that we should expedite action just like, just like you also think so. But by and large, the reports will, will be taken. I think And in the Upper West region, though crime rate in the Jirapa municipality is on the decline, the issue of armed robbery is one of serious concern to residents as they are unable to go about the normal activities, especially in the evenings or the night. The municipality recorded eight cases of robbery attack last year. The Jirapa municipal commander of the Ghana Police Service, DSP David Mensambavor, parried the blame on their inability to apprehend suspects on lack of transport and also the low number of police personnel posted to the area. But the situation may change following the donation of motorbikes and also the construction of a modern police unit at Jirapa. Here is Rafiq Salam with more. The 2010 Population and Housing Census of the Ghana Statistical Service put the population of the Jirapa municipality at 88,402. The number of police personnel in the area is nothing to write home about as compared to its residents. One police officer is to 3,157 people. The United Nations standard peg it at one police officer to 500 people. Despite the low number of personnel, they still are faced with myriad of challenges such as accommodation and transportation. The command has only one rickety Nissan Nevada pickup which was given to them in 2011, followed by the posting of 28 police officers for the entire municipality, a figure too small and way below the UN standard for effective policing. Though crime rate in the municipality has reduced, Juruba Municipal Commander DSP David Mensa Amebo is concerned about the issue of armed robbery. We have a very vast area. You know, this part of the country, robbery is very rampant. You cannot travel after 6 p.m. So when we have a vehicle and a personnel, we intensify our patrols day and night so that people can go freely about their uh, legitimate uh, duties. Mindful of his social corporate responsibility, Royal Cozy Hill Hotel presented 50 bags of cement, two tents, and two abstinent motorbikes, all valued at 11,000 Ghana cities to augment the transportation of the command in order to facilitate their smooth operations. The hotel has also secured a site within the Jiruba municipality for the construction of a modern police unit for the Jiruba command. Site engineer for Royal Cozy Hill Hotel, Charles Germany intimates the decision to present the items was due to a resource gap that bedeviled the Jiruba police command. We know the, the inherent uh, problem of uh, armed robbery around uh, this area, the neighboring towns. Uh, so with this motorbike, they can move to most of the neighboring towns. And even the presence of the police uh, scares people away. So that is the intention, to make the police to be very close to the people, and then security is maintained. DSP David Mensah Amibor thank management of the hotel for the kind gesture and call on other benevolent organizations to emulate their example to help curb crime in the area. Reporting for the news, Rafik Salam, Jiruba. And that's Rafik Salam. Uh, Nothing like a Rafik Salam report. Yeah, that's not the usual uh, refrain or tagline mm. that we know him for. Rafik Salam. Wow. Yeah, but even without the refrain, it's still a, a work of art. It's pure gold Jira to hear Bob. Rafiq's voice singing I, the story. I, I love Rafiq. In a way Salam. nobody else can. Yeah. 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 Good morning to you, Rafiq. We know he watches the show Definitely. all the time. Definitely. Right then. So uh, we've got a lot to do today, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, we have to mm. look at um, how the story. Do we have some bullet wounds on the front pages? You, you yes. were receiving through. Yeah. We have some injured people oh, injured on the front people. pages. Okay. And uh, there's a number bandying around of how many people were injured in the violence. We'll tell you that right Thank after you. these.